Hey everyone, it's Absol, but you can call me Matt, and I'm typically a full odds shiny hunter. That means I like to hunt shinies at the base shiny odds within the game. 1 in 81.92 before X and Y, and 1 in 40.96 after. Normally in most Pokemon games, hunting at the full odds is the natural default, and you really have to go out of your way to increase those shiny odds. But in the newest game, Legends Arceus, things are a little bit different. In this game, it feels like you have to go out of your way to not increase your shiny chances, since the whole point of the game is to do research on Hisui's first Pokedex. And when you reach research level 10 for a species of Pokemon, completing various tasks that often just happen normally through regular gameplay, the shiny odds for that species gain one additional roll, going from 1 in 4096 to 1 in 2048.25, making it no longer full odds. Now, this really hasn't bothered me all that much, but I was still curious. I wanted to go counter to the point of the game and see if I could seek out all Pokemon and make my way all the way up to Arceus while keeping everything that naturally spawns in the wild and can be shiny below a research level 10, keeping it full odds. Doing what I'm about to do is sort of counter to the point of the whole game, so I don't really recommend doing this if you haven't already experienced it at least once. And the current method that I'm using for it uses two switches and two copies of the game. But with the information that I'm about to provide to you, I'm pretty sure that you can also just do this on one switch and one copy of the game without trading. I was just too dang interested in seeing what trading would do. So let's get started. On February 26th, my journey began with a very cursed Fortnite pun. I feel like I was possessed by the spirit of a Zoomer that night. And Fortnite D6's 4096 journey began with business as usual. You can start out picking any starter that you want. I went with Ral at this time. I also turned off autosave, which I usually do anyway, because you might need to soft reset on some important battles to not complete some dex entries. And on the subject of important battles, here's a hopefully handy list of every single Pokémon that you're required to battle over the course of the main story, not counting any sort of side quests or requests. Note that there are 10 Pokémon, like Golem, that you fight twice, and you have to fight against Pikachu and Braviary three times. I did exclude a few required battles from this list because they're special cases of Pokémon, and these are Pokémon that are either shiny locked because they're legendary, or do not naturally spawn in the wild outside of massive mass outbreaks, which have a boosted shiny rate anyway, meaning that they cannot naturally appear in the wild at the full odds. So as a full odds hunter, reaching research level 10 on these things is no concern. Also, don't worry, I will be using a capture card for most of this. It's just the first night that I did it, I was filming it because the OLED switch literally looks better than my TV. Anyway, the first battle in the game is versus Volo and Togepi. And we don't really have too much to worry about with this battle, since Togepi doesn't have any sort of tasks for defeating it, and it doesn't yet know any of the moves that would complete research tasks. Now our starter on the other hand we need to be a little bit careful about, since all three starters have moves that will reward research points if you use them, with the moves with the red arrows giving double points. Then in the field lands we have a tutorial where we have to capture a Bidoof, a Starly, and a Shinx. You can avoid an extra research task on Starly by having it notice you before you capture it, but as you'll see in a minute, it doesn't really matter whether or not you collect this, because we're going to have to collect a few research tasks here and there anyway in the field lands. We can't just simply ignore the Pokédex for this entire playthrough because we do have to collect some research tasks in order to progress in the story. And literally our first mission within the Galaxy Expedition team will present a slight challenge for us with that. This first mission tells us that we need to complete some dex entries in order to progress, but that's not necessarily actually the case. All we really need to do is reach star rank 1, which requires 500 dex research points. Each individual task in the Pokédex is worth 10 points, or 20 points if it has the red arrow next to it. Whenever the total number of points you've gotten for a species reach 100, that's when it reaches dex level 10, and is no longer considered full odds. And with all the Pokémon that spawn in this area in the Fieldlands, we can easily reach 500 points without bringing any of them to research level 10. So I just ran around capturing every single Pokémon and not doing much else with them, since you do have to capture all of them anyway to encounter Arceus at the end of the game. If you're doing this on a single game setup with no trading, this is what most of the game will be like for you. But with the setup that I'm doing, this is the only time we'll have to be this meticulous with our captures. Whatever you do, just make sure you don't overlevel the species that are required battles that I showed earlier. And to keep checking your decks, because sometimes you'll get a lot more points than you'd think from one capture. And once you're done catching them all, you'll be at 500 points in no time. You don't even need the difficult captures like the Alpha Snorlax or Rapidash. 
If you're in need of some extra points, maybe go and evolve your starter from all the EXP that you got from capturing. And then, things can get interesting. After we go through a couple more required battles. First we battle Akari or Ray's Pikachu, which you don't want to see use Thunderbolt or Thundershock, and also we battle this three times over the course of the game. It's really not that bad though. And then we battle Mai's Munchlax, which doesn't really have any concerning research tasks at all. And after that battle we've unlocked the rest of the field lands, where we're going to capture the Pokémon that I'm going to use for the rest of the run. A Stantler and a Scyther. But these Pokémon will not remain a Stantler and Scyther. This is where the second Switch will come into play, and an interesting lesson on Pokémon obedience in this game. So traditionally in Pokémon games, the max obedient level and the rules of obedience do not apply to Pokémon that you yourself captured. Without hacking, the only time you'll ever experience having a disobedient Pokémon is if you trade and have a Pokémon above the max level with a different OT. But for the first time in Legends Arceus, there are conditions under which Pokémon that you caught will disobey you. And that's if, and only if, the Pokémon was captured at a level above your Max Obedient level. You can still level up Pokémon beyond the Max Obedient level and still see them obey, so the only thing that really matters is the level that it was caught at. Unless, of course, it was obtained in a trade, in which case it works the way that it always has. So for this challenge, I'll be making use of a loophole that I've been using for as long as I've been able to hold a Link Cable. This may not be as Arceus intended for us to do during this game, but we're about to cheese things with some trading. Trading a Pokémon from an early game file to a completed file, and then training it up to be an absolute beast. These two are about to go through a little training arc. And then trading it back to the main file. So I have a fully obedient, super strong Pokémon. So why did I pick Stantler and Scyther? Well, they evolve into Weirdeer and Cleavor, which are from that special list of Pokémon that we can freely complete the dex entries for. One of the biggest distinctions between doing this with trading and doing this without trading is actually Weirdeer. Because Stantler, alongside Quillfish and Basculin, have very special methods to evolve. And if you were to naturally evolve one of these Pokémon, you are going to complete the dex entry for that species. So, in order to evolve this Stantler, I had to do this on this second game, where I already had completed Stantler's Pokédex entry, so I don't have to complete it on my main file. In order to get these for your decks on a single file with no trading, you'll have to capture them in massive mass outbreaks in the post-game. But since I'm trading, I can use a Weird Ear right now. And in addition to level grinding, I also use Grit items to get their stats up all the way. And after battling a lot of Alphas for a couple hours, I was at a level where I was confident I could take on the rest of the game. Then it was time to trade these guys back. Not just once, but five times. Because in order to perfect the dex entry for Weird Ear and Cleavor, which are among the few that we actually can perfect on this file, since they don't normally spawn in the wild, you have to obtain five of them. And by trading Pokémon, every single time you receive a Pokémon in a trade, even if it's the same one, it counts as receiving that Pokémon again. So by doing this, we can obtain the five Weird Ear and five Cleavor that we need for that without boosting Stantler and Scyther's dex entries whatsoever. Alright, see, we've reached research level 10 for these two. Full odds in this game is 49 deer 6. Bug. So, with my super powerful Pokemon, I made quick work of Alpha Cricketoon, Leon's Gumi, and Iridus Glaceon, which you don't want to see use Baby Doll Eyes. And then it was time to fight the Noble Cleavor. And with that, we had made it through the Field Lands without completing anything that naturally spawns in the wild. But there is a little roadblock ahead before we can move on. We have to reach 2nd star rank, which will require 1800 dex research points. To fill out these necessary points, I resorted to drastic measures. Alright, today is March 18th, and I've decided that before we go to the Mirelands, we're going to do the most time-consuming part of this whole entire thing. We're going to seek out all Pokémon. So let's grab our Pokédex, old school style, and let's do this. Completed Pokedex. Incomplete Pokedex. Completely blank Pokedex. I think my game is glitched. I don't have Dust Docs registered, but I'm definitely seeing one right now, right there. This has to be some sort of glitch, right? All right, well, it's dark outside now, and I have a nice little two-page list of the entire Hisui decks. Now I'm going to go through this game 
and keep track of everything that I've captured. Like Rowlet and Dartrix. Check. So let's get some trades done until we complete this Pokedex right here, ignoring the things that I have already captured along the way. And thus began four hours of trading. I had already organized my entire living decks in Pokedex order on the game on the left to make this a lot easier. And as I completed trades, I checked off the Pokemon in my notebook to keep track of things. Zub it. Of course I kept myself entertained with other things while doing this. And on the select few Pokemon whose dex entries I could complete, I traded them back and forth five times like I did with Weirdeer and Cleavor earlier. With this last Basquiat Legion, we've completed the first page. That's nice. Oh, I have so much more. With the final trade done, we now get to bask in the glory of listening to the research task jingle hundreds of times. Kata Decidueye. Kata Cyndaquil. Kata Quilava. I could have just moved on instead of waiting through all 12 minutes of these notifications here, but I wanted to see the fruits of my labor flash before my eyes in the top left corner of the screen. It was oddly satisfying in a way, even if I wasn't really fully paying attention to it the whole time. And now the pressure was on for me to not accidentally complete any dex entries, because if I did, these four hours would go to waste. But luckily, I'd say our job is actually pretty easy from here. I was extremely curious to see if having all of these Pokemon register in our Pokedex would cause any sort of sequence breaks in the game, or if trading certain Pokemon over, like the unknown, would register them in the unknown index. And it turns out, it doesn't. 242 registered in the Pokedex. 99 tasks with unreported data, it's probably a lot more than that. Um. Yeah, we've definitely seen everything now. We did a couple double whammies here and there, like Alpha, Alpha. Let's go talk to the Professor. As you can see, the only Pokemon that we completed were ones that do not naturally spawn in the wild. Everything else, well, we got at a healthy, low research level. Do we have anything at research level one? I think everything's at least research level two. Except for Arceus, we don't have that one actually perfect yet because uh, you have to receive a part of it as part of the story for it. Six thousand three hundred forty more points on the board. We were able to rank up three more times because of our trading endeavors. But now we can go ahead and actually go off to the Mirelands, which is excellent. After one more required battle with the car, your Ray, which was again not much of an issue. Greg Burt, jump. Oh, it's like I've been in these ruins before, dude. Not doing any exploration and just doing these required battles made me realize how short this game really can be. Of course, I was also ridiculously overleveled, so that kind of helped too. Within a mere matter of minutes, I was already battling against the Noble Lilligant and then could move on to the Cobalt Coastlands, since I had already reached a star rank of three. I hate Pokemon. The first battle versus Irida here was the first battle that I actually soft reset on, because both Glaceon and Eevee use moves that would complete research tasks. I really didn't spend much time resetting during this run at all though, and you do also have to keep in mind that some Pokémon only know one move, so sometimes it's almost inevitable that you'll get one research task done in a battle. Also, for the story, you have to catch a Dusclops for Iskin. I just kept the one that I traded over from my main file. Better not look behind you, dude. Also here at the Coastlands, we have to battle all three Misfortune Sisters, and I'd say the one you have to watch out for the most is Charm, and her Gengar. Because once her Gengar starts using moves, the research tasks fill up pretty fast. You'll also want to try and avoid as many random encounters with these sisters as you can. Then, maybe 30 minutes after Lilligant, I was done with the Coastlands. Since I was already star rank 4, I could also just move on to the Highlands. You want to be a little bit careful with Ingo's Gliscor's Mud Ball, since this move completes research tasks, and it makes it harder to hit. I just used Aerial Ace to get past it. 
After a lot of battles with various blue and purple Pokémon, you'll be able to take down Electrode and then move on to the Ice Lands. If you can reach star rank 5, which requires 8,500 points. So now in order to reach star rank 5, since we've already caught them all, we're going to have to grind out some research tasks. And I've decided that I'm going to give the brunt of the tasks to the Pokémon that we don't have to worry about completing the dex entries for, like Cleavor and Weirdeer. But there's still an issue. We have to use moves in battle with these Pokémon, and most species in the Pokédex possess tasks for the number that you've defeated. But thankfully, there exists a good number of Pokémon that we can freely defeat without having to worry about anything going up in the decks. This list of Pokémon is mostly comprised of baby Pokémon, some rare Pokémon, starters, and space-time distortion exclusives. So in order to get this done, we're going to have to be beating up a lot of babies. It's unfortunate that it's come to this, but to quote a great baby philosopher, Tommy Pickles, a baby's gotta do what a baby's gotta do. Let's grind. The highest concentration of Pokémon that we can defeat without worrying about tasks spawn in the field lands, which is good news for anyone attempting this challenge without trading because it gives you an early level grinding spot. Grinding out these points started out really easy, but the tasks became a little bit more demanding over time, for the same measly amount of points. Perfecting just Cleavor and Weirdeer wouldn't give me all the points that I needed anyway, so I decided instead of perfecting those entries, I would just trade in a couple more Pokémon, like Lilligant and Fione. And after decimating the poor Mime Jr. population, we had reached 8,500 points and Star Rank 5, the last required Star Rank in the entire game. Only one required battle in the Ice Lands really gave me any trouble with dex completion, and it was this one versus Electivire, Magmortar, and Rhyperior. Be sure to aim for Electivire first, since it's the most prone to completing research tasks. Magmortar is the last one you need to worry about, because it doesn't even have a defeated task. And then quell the Noble Avalug so random alphas can appear on the map. Alright, with Avalug quelled, we've pretty much accomplished our goal here. I can go to any area on the map now, shiny hunt for anything that can possibly spawn in the game, and find it at the full odds. But, I'm not satisfied with ending it just there. We've sought out all Pokémon, so let's play all the way up to Arceus, and keep everything full odds in the process. At this point you have some battles against trainers with a lot of Pokémon, like Benny and Kamado, who you'll battle again in the postgame, as well as your third battle with Charm. Her Gengar reached research level 7 after this battle, so be careful. And after the credits roll, this is what happens if you've already caught all the Pokémon. I already did, bro. Bro, I already did. Then after catching some legendaries and collecting some plates, it was time to take on the big final battle of it all. The battle versus Volo and Giratina. Unlike my first playthrough where I attempted this battle and lost many times, whenever you're doing something like this with the dex research tasks, it's imperative that you save and soft reset if you fail. Because otherwise you'll end up like me. On my first file, completing the dex entries for these Pokémon just by losing the battle dozens of times. But you should be fine if you manage to take them down first try like I did, thanks to the power of Dialga and Palkia in my party, who thankfully still obeyed me since they were captured at level 65, which is the max obedient level that I have right now. I guess attempting this battle with legendaries is a lot easier than attempting it with a Krikatoon, like I did on my first playthrough. Then, only the battle with Giratina remained. There was just one burning question going through my mind throughout this entire battle. Afterwards, when we get the Azure Flute, would we be able to immediately skip to Arceus since I've already captured them all, or would I still have to go through the quest to capture Giratina and the Genies first? And the answer turned out to be a pretty interesting one, and the only one that could maybe really be considered a sequence break in this entire run. Azure Flute. With the ability to summon Arceus after catching them all thanks to trading, suddenly it made sense as to why the quests to capture Giratina and the Genies were made as requests and not main story missions. The previous legendaries had actual story elements to them with the plates, while those are merely for catching them for the Pokédex.
Oh, we actually can. <laughs> nice. To make the rest of the story short, I took down Arceus at the Hall of Origin, and then I checked my Pokedex to make sure my battle with Volo didn't complete any dex entries. Uh-oh, we perfected a dex entry. Dang it. Nah, that's, that's part of the game. All right, but now we're ordering by research level here, scrolling all the way down to the bottom of the Pokedex. The only stuff that's at research level 10 are legendaries and the Hisuian Pokemon that only appear in the wild through the massive mass outbreaks, which as a full odds hunter, I don't even use in the first place. Meaning that every other Pokemon that naturally appears in the wild, if I were to find it shiny, would appear at the full odds. I have the perfect shiny hunting file set up now, and I can't wait to start completing dex entries by finding some full odds shinies. This has been a journey, it's been an interesting one, it took a lot of planning, but I'm just glad to see that it's possible. 17 hours, lots of trading, but um, yeah, we did it. But there's one more Pokemon I need to address. One that I erroneously stated can't be hunted at the full odds in a previous video, when it actually can. Unknown. So the unknown can start appearing in Salacion Ruins after you've captured all 28 that are scattered about in the wild. And if you save the ones that spawn in Jubilife Village for last, you get a one-time opportunity at hunting the unknown at full odds. Simply save before capturing the last Jubilife unknown that you need, and then immediately make a beeline for the Mirelands where you can hunt it the same way that I was hunting it in my previous unknown video, but this time it'll appear at a research level 8. That is, until the next time you talk to the professor or leave the area, at which case the dex entry will become completed, which is why this is a one-time thing. If you want to get a lot of full odds shiny unknown in this game, be prepared for a very, very, very long expedition. But anyway, that's this whole video. It's been pretty fun trying to figure out if this was possible in the first place, and now I can go work on some level 100 gauntlets like hitting rocks and trees a lot. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.